Well, hey guys, um, today we're continuing our discussion on Jesus and, and tough times as we study our Bible together here on Wednesdays. Um, I just want to go ahead and say this, and I'll mention this again at the end, but when we have our Zoom meeting tonight, um, prayerfully, um, we'll have some good news about meeting together again. So uh, be sure to, to tune in to that tonight. That'll be at 7 o'clock this Wednesday um, because we actually have a council meeting uh, beforehand at 6. So I just want to make sure I'm in that meeting long enough um, before I have to stop and do our Zoom meeting tonight. So on Wednesday night this week at 7 o'clock is when we'll meet. Uh, so be sure to uh, tune in for that and hopefully we'll have some good news to share with you. Now, last week when we met, uh, we talked about how uh, you know God hears us even in our tough times. How He He listens to us uh, when we're honest with Him. We can be honest with Him, and we talked about that. How uh, we can tell Him how we're truly feeling, even our our frustrations, our doubts, our questions uh, about Him and what He's doing. Uh, even in the midst of all that, God listens to us, and uh, He does that because He cares for us. And though today. We, I want us to be able to see and understand that it doesn't just stop with talking with God. Um, you know, we need to learn how to, to lean on Him when things go wrong. Um, when we have faith in Him and we trust Him, even in the bad times, most especially in the bad times, uh, when we do that, we begin to see and understand that, that He will help us get through those hardest of times. Um, and so, you know, you think about people around you who have gone through rough times, people around you who have had bad days. Um, you know, you think of your own experiences even. When you see people going through rough times, you know, oftentimes, how did they respond? You know, do they tend to have faith in Jesus when things are tough? Do you have faith in Jesus when things are tough? Um, because we can have faith in Him when we understand that we're His, that we belong to Him. If if, if we're Christians, if we're truly Christ followers, then, then we belong to Him and He cares for us. He loves us. Uh, oftentimes, however, we can get so focused on the situation we're in, the bad circumstances we're surrounded by, uh, that we lose sight of Jesus and we don't put our faith in him. And it's easy to blame him in those times uh, when we feel that way. Uh, it's easy to blame him when everything around us seems to be going wrong. And sometimes this is because we think that he's supposed to change the situation or, or change the circumstances to what we want them to be. But, and when that doesn't happen, you know, we think that he's let us down. And that's what we're going to look at today, what it means to have faith uh, in Jesus even when things are not going the way that we want them to or we expect them to. Um, and things can get tough, and it can be hard to really trust Jesus. Um, but we need to know that He is the one that is going to help us to uh, get through the hardest of times. So uh, before we get started, let's go ahead and pray together, and then we're going to dig into God's Word uh, once again. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you, God, just for who you are. God, we thank you for the privilege that we have once again to be able to come together and, and just worship you, uh, Lord, through studying your word together. God, I pray that you help us to understand it. Uh, Lord, help us to take the things that we're, we're learning tonight as we study your word, as we uh, learn to apply it. Lord, help us to do just that, to put it to use, to put it into practice, Lord, so that ultimately, God, you can be glorified, your name can be lifted high, and Lord, others may be pointed to you. Uh, so God, I pray right now that you just speak through me. Uh, Lord, speak to hearts tonight. Lord, help us to understand who you are and who you want us to be. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, last week we talked about being open and honest with God, spending time talking to him. We talked about writing a letter or a note or just a text or something like that uh, to him. And I hope you took the time to, to really do that, uh, uh, you know, this past week and, and maybe even continue practice doing that. Just spending time talking with God uh, and having those real honest conversations with him. Uh, with that, though, many people struggle with the fact that even when we're honest with God, um, he doesn't take our problems away. Um, you know, we, we give him our struggles and, and he supports us and helps us deal with 
you know, those times. However, the circumstances sometimes may not change. They may not go away. Um, you know, and it's during these times that we can even tend to, to blame God for causing the problems um, or not doing enough to, to help us. Well, tonight's scripture is a story where that's what happened. Um, so if you will turn me to John chapter 11. John chapter 11 is where we're going to be tonight. I don't know how much you remember about the gospel of John, but uh, it was written by a guy by the name of John. Uh, go figure. Um, John's dad was a man by the name of Zebedee. Imagine that. Um, his brother was James, and Jesus once referred to James and John as the sons of thunder. I mean, imagine that, having that be your nickname. It's pretty cool. But anyway, John was a fisherman by trade, um, and he left that livelihood. If you remember, Jesus came to James and John and told he said, hey, come follow me. And so they left their, their nets. They dropped their nets. They left their father Zebedee, and they went and they followed Jesus. So he left that livelihood behind, that family business behind, um, and that's who John is. John also wrote uh, the last book that we find in the Bible, the Revelation. Uh, he wrote that. He also wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John as well. Um, and so John's whole purpose, though, for writing this gospel, the gospel according to John, uh, that gospel account, um, we find the reason for that in the last two verses of John. If you look at John chapter 20 and verses 30 and 31, there John tells us, he says, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So John's whole goal for writing this seems to have been clearly to communicate that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He's the promised Son of God. All right, so tonight let's see what he has to say about this Messiah in, in John chapter 11. And we're going to start in verse 1 there. So John chapter 11, let's just read the first three verses to kind of kick it off. It says this, Now man was sick. Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. And, and it was her brother Lazarus who was sick. So the sister sent a message to him. Lord, the one you love is sick. And when Jesus heard it, he said, This sickness will not end in death, but it is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, just to, to make sure we're all on the same page here, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, they lived in Bethany, which is uh, just a couple of miles outside of, of Jerusalem. Um, they were brother and sisters there. They lived in the same house. And Jesus had a very close friendship with them, almost like family. Uh, he'd visited their household several times. And again, they pointed out here that Martha was the one that um, took that, that perfume, uh, that very expensive perfume that was reserved for burial and she she broke it open and she uh, washed Jesus' feet with it um, and wiped his feet with her hair. Um, she anointed him with that with that perfume. Um, but anyway, uh, that that's who these are. And, and you know, it, you know, we, we can understand, we can kind of see this friendship here um, by the wording that Mary used in her message when she said she said to Jesus, "Hey," or she sent message to Jesus describing Lazarus as the one you love. Um, and Jesus did care deeply for them. Um, all right, but let's jump down to verse 17 and just see, see, see what happened uh, a little later on. Verse 17 says this, When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, less than two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. As soon as Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Then Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Yet even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Your brother will rise again, Jesus told her. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So there she's talking about the, the, when Jesus comes back again when the Messiah returns. But anyway, verse 25. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. 
Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who comes into the world. Now, when you read verse 17, what's the first thing that jumps out to you? I mean, Lazarus is what? Dead. He's dead, and he's been dead for four days at this point. I mean, but didn't we just read in verse 4 that Jesus said, uh, you know, he loves him and, and, and said that he, it wouldn't end in death? But then if you look at verse 6, if you were to go back and look at verse 6, um, it tells us there that Jesus stayed where he was for two more days after he heard that Lazarus was so sick. So apparently he wasn't in any rush. And, and when you read that, it's, it's a little confusing, right? I mean, but there's something bigger that's going on here, something that Jesus also said in, in verse 4 uh, where he said it was, it was all going to be happen for the glory of God. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, it can be hard for us to accept that Jesus had a bigger plan here than making Lazarus better, than healing Lazarus from his sickness. Um, if I sent a message to Jesus that said, hey, this person who's supposed to be super important to you is deathly sick, we need you quick here and now, I would have expected him to come right away. I mean, just as many of you would have too. But this helps us to understand how Jesus views our tough times, what happens here in this story. Um, because making tough times just go away isn't always Jesus' goal. Yes, sometimes that may happen. But helping us through a tough time seems to be more important to Jesus. Now, when you look at Martha, what Martha says uh, in verses 21 and 22 again, she says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And then she says, yet even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. And so she, she's pretty bold here. Again, she's, she's honest with him. Uh, to start with, right? You know, if if he would have only been there, then he could have saved her brother. Um, like we talked about last week, you know, here we see someone being honest with Jesus, being bold in their request with Jesus, how she feels. She knows or, or she wants to know why he didn't come right away. Why did you uh, linger, Lord? Why didn't you come right away when you learned that Lazarus was sick? But we also see here that Martha doesn't fully understand what Jesus is saying to her when he tells her, hey, he's going to come back to life. He talks about bringing Lazarus back from the dead. Um, and this is a great example, again, of how we can say anything to Jesus. We can, we can be honest with him. But at the same time, we can still believe that he is the one who's going to take care of us. And what, what, what was Jesus' response here? How did Jesus respond to Martha's honesty here, her, her frustration even? Well, if you look at it, he didn't rebuke her. He didn't get on to her. He didn't punish her. She was hurting. Jesus knew that, and he understood that this accusation from her came from that place of hurting. And Jesus responds to her honesty in a, a teachable, faith-building way. Jesus was more concerned with Martha understanding who he is than what he can do for her. You know, sometimes when things are tough, we forget the point is to trust in who Jesus is and that he will be with us. Instead, we have an attitude that says, what can you do for me, Jesus? We go to Jesus again like he's a vending machine and we just want to push the right button so that we can get what we want. And then we get angry when things don't go the way that we want them to or the way that we expect them to. And see, Jesus wants Martha to know that regardless of the situation, regardless of what the circumstances are at that point, no matter how bad it may be, Jesus is the one that brings life. He's the one that is bigger than anything. Well, let's look at verse 28 here and see how this story ends. So verse 28 there in John chapter 11, it says this. 
Having said this, she went back and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And as soon as Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw that Mary got up quickly and went out. They followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to cry there. As soon as Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and told him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And when Jesus saw her crying and the Jews who had come with her crying, he was deeply moved in his spirit and troubled. Where have you put him, he asked. Lord, they told him, come and see. In verse 35, Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, Couldn't he who opened the blind man's eyes also have kept this man from dying? And then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Remove the stone, Jesus said. Martha, the dead man's sister, told him, Lord, there's already a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd standing here, I said this, so that they may believe you sent me. After he said this, he shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out bound hand and foot with linen strips and with his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unwrap him and let him go. I mean, you hear that story and you're like, man, wow. You know, look at what Jesus does here in this situation. He brings a dead man, a man who had been dead for four days, a man whose body had already began to, to decay and smell bad. As Martha said, the stench is already getting strong. Jesus brought him back to life. I mean, can you imagine being there in that moment and witnessing that even? But then you, you look at this and you're like, but why? Why did Jesus bring Lazarus back? You know, it's kind of funny because Martha believes, she says she believes that Jesus can do anything. However, it doesn't seem to dawn on her just how far Jesus will go, just how much Jesus can do. I mean, for them, death is the final end. There's nothing after that. But back in verse 35, we see something amazing. Shortest verse in the English Bible, by the way, but one of the most profound as well. It says, Jesus wept. And we need to understand this, that Jesus grieves with us. Um, God is not detached from our suffering. He understands our suffering. Uh, if we believe, as those who have been saved by faith in who Jesus is uh, and what he accomplished on the cross and his resurrection, if we believe all of that, then we know that God is present in our times of suffering, that God is there in the midst of our suffering. He tells us, hey, I will never leave you or forsake you. I'll be with you even in the tough times, especially in the tough times. And here we see that Jesus hurt. Jesus wept. He grieved. And it wasn't necessarily because Lazarus had died. It was because he loved Martha and Mary and Lazarus. He hurt because they hurt. And he hurts for us and with us as well. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul gives us some amazing truth there. In verses 16 through 18, it says this. Therefore, we do not give up. Even though our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day. For our momentary light affliction is producing for us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. So we do not focus on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And here Paul is talking about the struggles that we all face 
in the course of living out the life of a Christ follower. And if anybody knows better about the struggles that come with following Jesus, it's Paul himself. And Paul is saying, hey, you know, these very real, these very troubling problems that we all experience, he says, hey, they're light and they're momentary. They don't last forever. Paul can say this because, again, he's speaking with eternity in mind. He's thinking about, hey, this little bitty time span that we have here on earth, it could be, you know, we don't know how long it'll be, average about 80 years maybe. But he says that is absolutely nothing compared to the eternity that we can't even fathom how long eternity is that we get to spend with God in heaven if we're his. Our time and eternity in heaven with God is what we're made for. It's what we're created for. And when you take that perspective, when you look at it in light of eternity, even the toughest problems that we can face here on earth become a, a little more bearable. And Paul talks, too, about the, the seen and the unseen. The seen refers to the things of this earth. The things that are temporary and short-lasting, the unseen, again, is the eternal. It's the heavenly things, the, the lifetime of relationship that we have with God that's waiting for us after this life is over with. Martha could make sense of her brother's death and her frustration with Jesus because she took an eternal perspective. At the end of the day, Jesus never promised to take away our troubles. In fact, if you read the Bible and you read what Jesus said, he actually told his followers that, hey, if you follow me, they're going to hate you even more than they hate me. And you look at what they did to Jesus. You know, again, he doesn't come to take away our problems and take away our troubles. You know, if, if that were his main motivation, then he wouldn't have waited and allowed Lazarus to die. I mean, we see other situations where Jesus just speaks. He's not even anywhere near the person that's sick, and he heals them. He could have done that. And, and see, the problem with us is when sin entered the world, death and suffering did too. Um, and though God is, is constantly and miraculously intervening uh, to stop pain and, and suffering, He doesn't stop at all. God allows us to experience tough times in, in part because it's during those tough times that we learn more about God and our faith can grow stronger. We experience God in, in deeper and more meaningful and profound ways during the tougher times of life. And God is always with us in the midst of our pain. And, and we can always trust Him to see us through. And another thing that is very true is this. We can't trust someone that we don't know. Um, sometimes me, we merely wait for what Jesus can do to solve our problems. Because we don't know Him well enough to trust in who He is. Um, if you've never put your faith and, and your trust and accepted Him as Lord and Savior, then you don't really know Him at all. That's the first step to helping you during tough times. But if you do know Him, if, if you've already uh, put your faith in Jesus, if you're already a Christ follower, but you aren't studying the Bible, if you're not spending time in, in, in prayer like we talked about last week, if you're not spending time worshiping Jesus, If you're not spending time with other believers, then you won't know him as well as you could. And again, you can't trust someone that you really don't know and understand. So take the time this week to continue to get to know him like we talked about last week. Get to know him so that you can trust in who he is And, and who he says he is, what his word says he is, read his word, talk to him, uh, spend time getting to know him and ask him to be with you during those tough times. And I want you to do this too. As a Christ follower, when we see other people struggling in tough times, that's when we step up and we remind them, we can show them who Jesus is and let them know, hey, you're not alone. Jesus loves you, and so do I. We need to help those who are hurting and do it in ways that will point them ultimately to Him. So, 
know Jesus, make him known. That's the central job of us as, as Christ followers, to love God and love people. So once again, know that, that even though our circumstances may not change, he's with us. He cares for us. And he wants us to just trust him. So let's do just that. Let's pray. Lord God, once again, we thank you for this day. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this reminder that we see in the life of, of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Lord, we thank you for bringing Lazarus back from the dead and showing us, God, that for one, you can do anything. That you are God, Lord Jesus. You are powerful. And Lord, thank you for that, that shortest little verse in the English Bible that says Jesus wept. Thank you for that reminder, God, that you hurt with us. When we hurt, we're not alone in that hurting. Lord, you don't look at us and tell us to suck it up and be tough. Lord, you weep with us. So, Lord, remind us of that. Lord, help us just to trust you. Lord, help us to look, Lord, for others when they're hurting and look for ways, God, to just help them. And, Lord, sometimes that's just being with them. Lord, sometimes we don't know what to say, and, and oftentimes... That's the best thing to do, is not to say anything. Just wrap your arms around another person and love on them. Lord, right now in the middle of all this, Lord, it seems like an impossibility to do that. But, Lord, we can still do that. We can still love on people. We may not be able to physically wrap our arms around them, but we can encourage them. And we can let them know that we hurt with them as well, just as you do. So, Lord, use us however you want to. Lord, I do pray once again, Lord, if there's anyone watching this video, listening to this right now, Lord, anyone who, who doesn't know you personally as Lord and Savior already, or maybe there's someone listening to this who's been playing games all, all their life, that they, they've gone to church and all that, but they've never truly put their faith and trust in you, Lord, I pray that they'll understand that you love them. Lord Jesus, you came to this earth. You lived a perfect life. You died a sinner's death on the cross. You, put, you, you took our sin and you paid that price for it, which is death. But Lord, you rose from the dead. And Lord, if we'll just believe that, if we'll believe that you are who you are and, and believe that, Lord, you, God, you, you brought Jesus back from the dead, if we'll put our trust and our faith in that, then, Lord, the Bible tells us we will be saved. We confess our sins to you. You are faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And, and, and Lord, make us righteous. Lord, help us just to trust in that. So, Lord, again, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the resurrection. And, Lord, just continue to speak to our hearts and use us, Lord, however you want to. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, thanks again for, for joining me for Bible study this week. Um, don't forget, if you're watching this on Wednesday night, um, uh, September the 2nd, I almost forgot we, we're in a new month now. Um, don't forget, if you're watching this on Wednesday, we're going to have our Beyond the Message time. We're going to have our Zoom meeting time uh, tonight at 7 o'clock. Okay, 7 o'clock tonight. Um, you should have already received a... a a text message with that, that link for the Zoom and, and password and all. Um, if you haven't gotten that, then be sure to text me real quick if you have my number or just message me. There's also a link down below in the description for this YouTube video. Um, it's on Facebook. Um, just reach out to us and I hope you can join us tonight. Again, we got some, hopefully I got some big news to share with you tonight about when we can meet again in person in the youth room. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I'm excited about that. So um, again, Zoom link tonight seven o'clock um message me if you don't have that already so thanks again for joining in uh and we'll see you later see you next week hopefully bye-bye